So today we're going to talk about marker, uh, making gradients with markers, and I will um, say something right off the bat, and that is that I'm actually myself much better at form than at color, and um, you know, so like when you start working with markers, you know, it's a little bit like painting, you know, it's it's, it's a little more to me, a little harder, and so before I even start, I want to say that you really have to practice drawing, right, and get into shape, right, because you could do, you know, a beautiful gradient with your markers, but if your shape is wrong, if your, if your basic form is wrong, you know, it's, it's just not going not gonna to work. So, uh, practice drawing and practice, you know, contour lines especially. Uh, okay. As Todd showed um, last time, you know, he showed different kinds of markers, so I have now Again, Prismacolors and Chart Pack, which are kind of a quite contrasty sets because the Chart Pack is going to be much darker than the Prismacolor. Um, I also have a blender for uh, the Chart Pack. Unfortunately, I couldn't find my blender for the Prismacolor. On the other hand, as Todd said, you know, he, he doesn't like to use it because actually he likes to see the strokes, right, and the stripes. However, sometimes you might need to, uh, to use the blender. Uh, what I do here, too, is I made myself a little, um, a little tray with numbers, right? So I just take a piece of paper or, you know, ideally a, a little stiffer than paper, like board. Make a little fan like that. Put your numbers there. And also, you can put numbers on the t tips, so at least you know where to put them back. Um, chart packs already have them, and uh, as Mike Lean said, don't keep capping and recapping them while you're working. Just leave them all uncapped. You can always um, replenish them a little bit by opening, you know, by taking these off there and dropping some stuff in, you know, like some lighter fluid or each marker is its own thing, but I think it's interchangeable. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid that they turn out. Um, okay. So let me just. And there's like different schools of how to do uh, gradients. So I'm gonna start with light ones. Um, I lost my. There we go. I'm gonna start with Prisma colors. Uh, so let's just take two. and five. You don't really need to have all the, um, you know, all the, um, all the numbers in a sequence. Uh, also, if you're working like on regular paper, that's going to uh, spread out much and it's going to bleed a lot more, right? So if you're going to use marker paper instead, uh, it's not going to bleed as much. So for this exercise, try to mask and try to stay within the boxes, but don't worry about it, you know, too much. You can, you know, it's just an exercise. Oof, I just took a whiff of the chart pack. Wow. I mean, of this. <laughs> yeah. So. Can you see that? Okay. Make it a little darker. Um, so, I'm just going to do a quick one here. Actually, I should make it a little bigger. Yeah, so get yourself some large pad of post-its. That's a good, a good system. There is, uh, by the way, if you there is one way described here in the book by Mike Lean on how to do blending. Um, and it, you know, so it recommends these steps, which is you start with, say, the lighter color, then you do the next color, a little darker, over two-thirds, and then you blend the boundary zone with the first color and so forth. So that's, and he also has some other good tips on how to use markers. That's, that's the book. Okay. Um, you know, the other thing is just try and see what happens, right? I mean, 
So I think the assignment calls for what, 10% to 40%, if I remember right? 10 to 40, yeah. 10 to 40, okay. So I would start with the light colors because then, you know, if you mess up, you don't mess up that much. Um, okay, so 10, 20, 30, yeah, it's hard to keep them straight already. So you see, if you put the caps on, it's going to be even more confusing. So I'll just leave the caps on, off. Um, and I guess if you want 10%, let's see. I don't know if this is going to show. Uh, something showing. Um, well, let me go back to something else. So if, if you're doing, say, like a cube, or a face of a cube, the way to do it is really to keep your the edge of the felt tip um, kind of going with the uh, border. Well, let, let's see. If I go like this, I know I'm going to get always a nice... And the way I'm doing it now is I'm just going as fast as I can so that it plants better. So you're going to get a kind of a darker edge, of course, but that's okay, right? Because that you can always... Now here, because we're masking, and you know, this can be useful. I'm going to make the works a little bit smaller, a little faster. Um, you just go over the, the things, right? So you can just go just like that. Yeah, actually going faster blends a little better. Um, then you go with number two, and now we just do, you know, maybe halfway. That. Then number three. Uh, my clean says one should wait to um, go over. Well, actually, no, that's something else. If you if you wait until it's dry and then you do a second layer. Um, let's see, that's thirty percent. If you wait until it's dry and then you go over it with the same one, it's going to increase by the next step. So it's going to go to like 40%. So I don't know if that's dry. So that's not going to double because they're transparent, right? It's just going to go one step up. So that's a, a little trick to know. Um, so it looks like a little bending and now I'm just going to go with 20% maybe. Um, and then, of course, lifting your, you know, your marker off is going to help too. Right at this point, I'm not, I'm not going back here at the beginning at all. Um, I mean, for you, it's hard to see. Actually, uh, I can hardly see it. Let's see. Maybe I, maybe I do want some. Right. So let's see. Uh, this big. Let me darken it. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's just kind of going back and forth a little bit between, you know, the top and then that kind of stopping. So maybe with the third. Yeah, it's much more contrasty on the screen. Um, the other thing is, in fact, you can use a blender first and that will make it blend much, you know, quicker. Um, but you have to do it while it's wet. So let me just get my markers. So these are chart packs, they're much darker. Um, one, two, and three. Okay. These are hard. As long as you, you use light blend and light uh, markers, you're set to go because you can then go over it with your drawing and make it beautiful no matter how bad your, your marker work is because, you know, it's just going to be a sort of a background. Um, okay, so uh, this got a little dirty. So again, with the blender, the trick is that you, you do it and then you immediately go over it while it's still... Um, all is still fresh, okay? So now I'm just going, oh my god, these are so smelly. <laughs> so let's 
So now I'm just going back with 10%. the Michael technique of always going in between the uh, with the you take the lighter color to go over the boundary between the lighter and the dark and so forth and so on but it's easy to overdo it as you can see it particularly since this is sort of, I mean you know you could kind of work it to death if you want but at some point you're gonna get tired um, so maybe I'll take the 50% too. Uh, um, it's a good idea to start off, you know, on the, on top of the mark on the friskets, you know, on top of the, because then you get that motion going and uh, yikes. marker paper, um, actual masking tape might work best because it does, it sticks a little better than post-its. But the gradient is not, it's not too bad. Um, what else? Let's see. Uh, do the same directions as we did on the other ones. So the first one is going to go like that, the second one is like that, if I remember right, the third is like that. The fourth is going this way, uh, in terms of the way the gradient is going, right? Um, the other way that my clean says to do gradients is to simply go over, uh, let's see, that's number two, and then just kind of lift up. Now to do that, you're gonna have to go in a direction that's opposite from the one that we're using here, but it does, it does work, I think, for You know, you just you just kind of lift your pencil up, and in some cases, you might want to do this. Um, yeah, see, even though it's marker paper, it's regular paper. No, it's regular paper. That's why. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. Marker paper is better. Sorry. That was just regular paper I was using. That's why it bled so much. Actually, looks more smooth on the screen because it's not so. The resolution is a little lower. Um, and then once we are done with this, you can either uh, make a box on each one of them, either with a little, uh, with a light or a medium marker, or uh, with a maybe like a gray pencil. I don't like it black because it's again it takes away a little bit. So maybe. Prisma colors have the other nib, right? The thin one. But with chart pack, you can do the same by um, by turning it so that you just do the little. Yeah, look, this is actually 10% of chart pack. It's so dark. Um, one trick when you do your lines is don't use a um, a, um, a plastic thing or a metal thing. Use instead a um, like a piece of chipboard that will absorb the um, the extra. Okay, otherwise it will it will smudge. No, I don't know if this is straight. I'm also mixing cool, but you can't really see it. I'm mixing cool and warm grays so it doesn't look so good on here but
and a little bleed, it's okay, right? I mean, it's, it can always... Um, If you have a drawing, you know, if this was a drawing, you could always... about even though it's a you know solid surface to uh, to have a little bit of a gradient you know here we're attempting to do that a little bit with adding a little uh, pencil which you can't see there but um, another way to put it is that if you have uh, if you have say a building right um, there's always something nice about, even though the surface is flat, you know, about showing something that doesn't quite um, completely. I'm gonna have to edit this sound of this video a lot, all these pauses. Um, anyway, so it's not completely filled. So even on something like this, one could go back in and just, you know, create a little bit of. If this is a good mix here, but uh, if, I think if you use marker on pencil, sometimes it will smudge. So this is probably not the best thing to do here, but uh, but it just makes it you know makes it a little more interesting, right? So that's twenty percent. Yeah, I think these are chart pack too underneath, so it's not. Anyway, um, so the, the PDF just shows, you know, all these just applications of markers. Um, let's see if there's anything else interesting here. Yeah, and for the curves, again, just, you know, use that, you know, that motion. In that case of your wrist, I mean, you have no choice, right? You have to use your wrist. Uh, although a little bit of wrist, but still elbow. In other words, my hand is not sitting on the on the paper. Otherwise, my arc is going to be really, really too short. Um, and speed really is, I think, something that looks like it's done fast. It it can look much more fresh than you know, something that looks like it was taking forever to do. 
take some different markers here, so that's not advisable, but all right, I'll, I'll just stop here. Uh, I think the trick is to just try it and practice on, um, you know, scrap paper maybe first.